Welcome to our June 22nd, 2022 uh, Douglas County Commission work session. Just a reminder for anybody who's joining us online and those of us, those folks with us here today, um, our information or our work sessions are for information only. We do not take any action and we also do not take any public comment. Um, and this is a continued discussion about ARPA proposals. And I'll go ahead and turn it over to Sarah. And Brooke. Thanks, commissioners. Appreciate this follow-up work session. Just to remind folks, too, we do have some time at the 5.30 meeting if we want to continue this conversation, or we can have the conversation next week at either 4 or 5.30. So I'll come back at the end of this meeting and talk a little bit about next steps and when you want to meet again. Brooke, do you think we should start with, so based off of our conversation yesterday, we've got a lot of additional information and we've asked some folks to be with us here today. I'd like to make sure we get to some of those folks, but there was some thought that perhaps if we talked about internals, we could maybe get that out of the way if we don't think the conversation will take too long. Brooke, could you throw up on the screen the summary spreadsheet? Absolutely. Um... So this is pretty small, sorry. There's a lot of information here. I'm gonna go to the internal tab here. Yeah. And Eric, can you come out here and shrink the podium? Or do you know how to shrink Jill? Okay. Thanks, you. Got it. Thanks, Eric. Um, so as we approached internal, what you're gonna see here is if it's on my sheet, it looks peach. Up here, it kind of looks pink. There are projects that were included that are not in the recommended total. They're either not in the recommended total because they're really big. <laughs> um, and we will talk about those separately. Or they're small that we feel like we can use one-time dollars perhaps in another place for them. So quickly, I'll go through them. The drug district court, um, connectivity on behavioral health and drug court, like I can accommodate that through other mechanisms. Um, the sheriff's office reentry, reintegration with job training and housing. I think that's something that we can work in partnership with HSC to achieve. Um, the at risk youth camp, I think that's also something we could find if that project gets a little further developed. That's something we could fund in another way. Uh, and I think that's it. So if you go to that total, if you go to the bottom, correct, we're at 7 million. I think on the top tab, on the summary tab, it shows that if we stay at 33% funding, I can, we can finance all of that. If you want me to stay to 25, which I can make work, not I would move a few players around and have a few more conversations. I'll be very transparent. The projects that I would have conversations about are open space, which has had some unintended delays and is a large project. The ongoing, uh, the self-help district court project has some money you in the proposed budget that you're gonna see in a week from now. Um, and also it's a lot of ongoing, which we really didn't wanna use ARPA funds for. So I think you all need more study on both of those projects. You're not ready to fund them, but I could still allocate some funding from there. Taking that out into account the election office and the treasurer's office. So what I would respectfully ask is if the commission is more comfortable with 25%, you let me come up with a plan for how I manage it. And I will live, we, we will live with internal projects of 25%. Um, but I, I don't want to go into specifics about specific dollar amounts today. If, if it's okay to have that kind of direction from the commission. This is, this is Commissioner Portillo. Um, I really appreciate having this discussion in advance of our externals discussion. Um, we had kind of talked about 25 to 33% for internal. I like the plan of having you take lead because I think all of the internal proposals that we saw yeah. 
are incredibly important. And there are some big ones, as you mentioned, that we probably don't need on this list immediately. Yep. Um, I would advocate for us to stick to that 33% for internals for ARPA, uh, mostly because these are one-time funds. This is a time for us to invest not just in our community, but also in the administrative infrastructure of our community and what that looks like. And these are all things that would benefit our community broadly. We know that there are other communities that are doing 100%, even communities within our community that are doing 100% on internal projects. I think it would be completely reasonable to stick with that 33% and not ask you to kind of nickel and dime the county internally so that we could provide more funds in other spaces. I think there's still, with 37% of these funds reserved for external projects, we're still making a huge investment in our community partners. This is Commissioner Reed. Um, <clears throat> I think I'm inclined towards the, the 33% also, however, I wonder if I would agree, I, I really like the idea of the um, self-help, for example, but knowing that that's going to be a part of our regular budget request, knowing that there's going to be ongoing costs to sustain that, um, it feels like a much bigger conversation. And so the amount requested, um, I'm not so certain about that compared to open space amounts requested, which is significantly more and would... Uh, you know, is almost the difference between that 33% and 25%. I wonder, um, I mean, I would really trust you, Sarah, to um, take point on if we reserve some of, if we were to allocate 33% for internal projects, if, we, if the commission decided to do that and move forward with that math, if, um, leave it up to you to deem if it was appropriate to set aside some of those without granting funds to certain projects yet, but with um, maybe some further study and information about factors that play into those larger projects. So, I mean, th this is a challenge because it's between, you know, looking at county projects, which are valuable, and also those projects out in the community, which We've had some people put some really thoughtful proposals together and address a lot of needs in the community. I guess I was leaning more towards 25%. But I, I hear what my, my colleagues are saying, um, but I, I really have no justification behind 25%. You know, I mean, it's a pretty random number as is 33%. So, you know, I guess, you know, what I don't want to do is put external projects versus internal projects. I, I think. Um, and so, you know, what I, I guess I'd lean towards 33% listening to the other commissioners and, and knowing that that's sort of an arbitrary number, but let's look at the external projects yeah. and see sort of where we end up. And um, I understand that that might create some friction as we get down to the last million or so. I can't believe I've even been saying that. <laughs> and, but I, but I, I, I guess I just want to make sure we're really thoughtful about all the projects that we have. We've had some really great applications here. Um, and, and so I guess I lean towards 25, but I, I hear the other two commissioners saying 33. And, and I hear, Sarah, that that difference in between 25 and 33 may be those two projects mm -hmm. right there. And yeah. I completely hear what you're saying, Commissioner Kelly, and you're right. These are we are trying to set numbers. I would just push back a bit on the going over the externals and then coming back to this, just because we had originally kind of talked through keeping these as two separate pots. And I think the easiest way to do that is to say, here's what we're gonna set this pot at so we know what we're working with for the externals. Cause I think that's where we as a commission are gonna get into the nitty gritty since we're asking Sarah to kind of take on the internals. Um, I hear what you're saying, these are not, I'm advocating for more internally so that we can do more internally to set ourselves up for success. I don't think it needs to stay. I, this is not a hill I will die on. I don't think it needs to be 33%, but I would like us to set that number before we transition to the discussion of externals if my commissioners would agree with that. So, so let me offer a, a way of looking at it. Maybe this is what people are saying and I'm just missing it. I feel like that happens a lot. 
if we set it at 33%, and you know, we're under no time crunch here, really, no time crunch. And so that 8% there, as we work through those yep. programs, is dollars that we may have available down the line as we develop these projects more. It's just that 8% that we're talking about, which seems incredibly random. So um, I'd be fine with that if we just set that 33% and know that we'll revisit that percentage down the road after yep. we get some more development on the open space plan and, and the self-help request. I think that makes sense because then we can, if we end up not fully developing those, move that eight to external projects that are shovel ready, ready to go. So I, it sounds like we're in a good place. Yeah, I think we have a consensus on on the approach. And I think um, in addition to that, as we've already talked about, and this is a good segue into conversation about external projects, regardless of what we decide here in the next couple of weeks, our experience with CARES Act has taught us that um, folks aren't going to spend all these funds, and I fully anticipate in a, in a year or so, depending, we're going to be back here talking about what is sort of round two for unspent funds. That could be both internal that hasn't manifested, um, and it can be externals, you know, because we had a large conversation last week about what if some of these funds were used as challenge grants. So instead of like outright purchasing a piece of property or a building, you know, what if it was used as a challenge grant to say, hey, organization, this sounds great. We're invested. You raise the other half. Come back to us in a year. Tell us how you're doing, if that makes sense. Um, okay, so I think we've resolved that so we can move on. So now you're in this for a question. If before we get off of this slide, um, I'm hoping that I can get a little bit of direction from commission about formally rescinding that emergency use policy. Oh, yeah. um, if that's something that the commission um, wishes to do, um, staff can work to prepare that for a future agenda. Um, so, you know, when we're talking about setting specific um, pools of funding that are available, uh, if we do formally rescind that policy and we set aside 33% of funding, that leaves 13.7 million dollars available for external distribution. So that would be our our target um, for reviewing these proposals. If that is the wish of the commission, then I can start working on that for a future agenda. Ms. Commissioner Reed, I, thanks for following up on that, Brooke. I, in my opinion, I think it makes sense to go ahead and rescind that. Um, it was useful kind of interim policy to get us to now, but um, I think let's uncomplicate it as much as we can and <clears throat> pull that back into the full pool. Sounds good, Brooke. All right, so we have consensus to change that. Brooke will prepare the policy, make sure we've got any last minute stragglers. And then so the commission here is looking that their potential funding for external distribution is $13,742,605. With that, if you go to the external tab, um, I, Brooke, why don't I just let you talk about how we handled commission priorities and how this sort has come out. And then I have some thoughts on you know, maybe how to approach it, but I'd like you to kind of explain what you got from commissioners and what, how you've lined out this whole spreadsheet. Absolutely. Thank you, Sarah. Um, so last week at the recommendation of commission, you guys were provided each with a list of projects um, and were tasked with prioritizing the projects um, that you would like to see funded. Um, as a result of those lists, I've compiled a new um, commissioner priority list, which is comprised of all of these projects here. If there was a project that was on your list, um, no matter the ranking, it is included in the commissioner priority. There are now multiple sets of um, proposals on this spreadsheet, um, but only the commissioner priority projects are listed here in the top. Um, another thing I also did was, you know, there was a lot of discussion last week about ongoing expenses um, versus just those one-time capital expenses. So 
I added a few new columns in here and I split out what the applicant indicated as personnel or fringe costs, contractual and commodity, and then really those one-time capital expenses. Um, and then I also made some notes. Um, along with all of uh, the returned lists of priorities that each commissioner provided, there were some questions, so I tried to address those questions in the comments field over here. I actually got quite a few responses, which I've included in the agenda packet today. Um, the last one I received was just at three o'clock. That is the only one that I know of that's not included in um, the agenda packet for tonight. So um, if you're going through that and you see that maybe there's something that wasn't quite answered or didn't answer your question um, in a fashion that you'd expected, please let me know. I'll reach back out to the applicant um, and we can go from there. So with that being said, um, last, last week, um, commission indicated that there were a few organizations that they'd like to bring to the table um, today and um, ask some questions. One of the things that I really want to point out here um, in some conversations with the folks at Burton Nash, um, I was able to find out that they their request was for a million dollars not for $5.95 million. So I think that's really important to note here. Um, and I've updated that on this spreadsheet. Um, and Mr. Falk is also here today to answer any questions about the specific breakdown for that program. Um, but I think that, that that was a pretty big find there. Um, so with that being said, um, this is kind of how I've, I've uh, tried to gather and um, seek answers and put it all in one place for commissioners to review and look at. Um, Do you, so, so the way, so high commissioner priority indicates one commissioner support. Yes. As a highly ranked project. Yes. It, we didn't go so far as to sort of say two commissioners. Um, so, you know, but at this rate, we've already knocked it down to 33 million. It's great. Look at us making progress. 20 million to go. Um, but it's better than 96. So I, one way I thought we could, we could hear from outside agencies, but just given the time frame, I'm, I, so I think one option for how to use the rest of our time is to have agencies come up that we have questions and try to learn more. Another option would be of these ones that that there are two commissioners in support of or trying to go through them quickly and sort of indicate if there's ones that only one commissioner is supportive of and you kind of like we do at budget time, can you sway your other commissioners to continue to keep it on the list? We could potentially cut this list down further. So I would propose those as two alternative methods to continue the conversation today. Clarifying question. Does Brooke know which ones are two, or is this a we would go through and discuss and say, like, okay, Baldwin retirement apartment? Yes, yes, no, that sort of thing. How do you how know which ones have two? I, I did tabulate those. It's at my desk, though. So, <laughs> well, and I'm, I'm fine either way. I'm just trying to clarify. Are we saying like, Let's go through and indicate like, yes, I still want to see this on high knowing we have to get rid of 20 million. Or is there another way we want to do it? Ms. Commissioner Reed, it feels like in terms of efficiency that that might be the way that we need to go to <clears throat> identify line by line. Um, which ones have, um, I get, I was under the assumption that the high was yeah, two or sorry. more. So no, that's okay. That's, I that's appreciate you clarifying. Um, so I do think that feels important to me to try and um, suss out. And I think some of the questions were answered. I do worry that if we dig into to questions and conversations right now, that, that our 40 minutes will be swallowed up. Why don't you run and fast. go grab it, Brooke? Because if we, 
but although I know while well, Commissioner Kelly is offering his comments, just in case, go grab it. Well, yeah, one thing I think we need to do is adjust the staff analysis on capital for Bert Nash because that's going to highly impact our number. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I don't know that we have the spreadsheet that we're looking at here, do we? It's in the packet. It is, is in the it? packet. I thought she added it late. Let me refresh. But I, I can have, if not, we can, I can send it to you. So the, the project to total column does reflect the 1 million from Bert Nash. Yeah. You're not seeing it? I'll send it to you. All right. I, she will add it to the packet for everyone that's watching, so you'll have a copy. Because one of the strategies I had thought, you know, in my brilliant ideas of how to make things more efficient, which never seems to work when it comes to ARPA funds, um, was that I think that from what I have seen, there's a number of projects that three of you are supportive of, and you're not even really interested at cutting them. You feel the project is shovel ready and you feel it's ready to go. So if, if we knew that those projects were very highly supported, we could just move on. And so I, that was part of my desire. Brooke, this I isn't agree, in the Sarah. packet right now. So is it the um, summary sheet? It should be. I sent it to Robin. Late. Okay. Yes. I'll make sure I'll forward it to commissioners now. Though. And if I may, um, I can stop sharing my screen for a moment. I can put all of these on here. Do it. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah. I was just going to say for those who are here, thank you for being here and thank you for being patient. Why we do these are changing rapidly, really fast. And so I, I know you all appreciate Brooke's work and thank you for hanging in with us. I'll just say, Sarah, I agree that if we can identify in particular the ones that all three commissioners rated high and do not have further follow-up questions, let's put those in a list, see what that total gives us. And then it's the next tier of working through the, um, the ones with two or, or only one commissioner highly ranking it. <clears throat> I'll, I will also go ahead and mention since um, just as an example, since the Burt Nash um, project did come up that originally um, prior to learning that it was the request was for a million versus six million. Um, I had personally rated that as a medium to high priority because I had some um, questions that I think have been partially addressed and concern about that large dollar amount for me knowing after the fact that it's a million dollar request does change that um, for me and makes it a, a bit of a higher priority. So I'll just acknowledge that one, Brooke, since what I wrote to you on my spreadsheet is a little bit different from based on those responses. I, I do think while we're waiting for Brooke to put all this information together, you know, one of the things that we didn't really take time to do when we started on this conversation last week and I know in my conversations with commissioners you've all reiterated to me you know this is a this is a exciting process you know it is truly um you know an opportunity to invest funds locally in a really impactful way that the county has not had an opportunity to do in the past that being said you know, it's bittersweet in some ways because there are projects, there's there's more projects that are really valuable and provide would probably provide extensive um, impact in our community that we simply just don't have the money to fund. And while we may have very um, direct conversations at this table as to how that funding comes together, I think it's important for the community to understand and for folks that have put time and energy into preparing these proposals that, um, you know, we represent that that could be seen as a loss that they don't get funded in this, in this equation and sort of, you know, understand that that's, it's difficult 
I'm proud of our organization for being transparent and working rapidly to distribute these funds to the community in ways that many communities are not doing. Um, that being said, it does open us up a bit for some vulnerability in terms of, you know, you, if you didn't know you had an opportunity, you never missed it to begin with. Now there are folks that are have put time, energy, and thoughts and dreams on paper or spreadsheets and, you know, are really, you know, I guess, I guess I've just asked for the community's understanding of us in this process that it's difficult um, with so many really tremendous needs. I appreciate that, Sarah. Yeah, I think um, it's, it really is an exciting process. And I, the, ultimately the RFPs that we received um, was even bigger than I think what the letters of um, interest had indicated to us. And so in some ways that makes the, the decision even more difficult than I think I was necessarily um, personally preparing myself for. So it is, um, it's a process that our staff has put so much work into and that so many people across the community have poured time and energy and, and constant conversations that I know have been going on for months and months about the feasibility of projects um, and the collaborations. So I'm really excited about this. Um, and I know that it is going to be hard for folks that we say no to ultimately um, just because of the sheer numbers. And my hope though, going forward is that like uh, this whole process has really um, provoked more collaboration and more spirited conversation, I think amongst agencies and community partners that, um, that work together or maybe haven't worked together in the past and that, or um, maybe even new to working with us at the county. And so I'm hopeful still about what some possibilities look like in our future, even beyond the allocation of these one-time dollars. Thanks, Brooke, for your hurried. <laughs> Absolutely. And telling. I will likely take a little bit of time before the regular agenda just to make sure that I've captured everything here, but I think I I think I got it all. Um, so now I've resorted this list, um, this initial set of commissioner priorities. And in column C, um, it, it will note the number of commissioners um, for that project. Um, and so I think at this point, um, can you run us a subtotal on that three? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So if we're looking at all of the projects that have three seventeen million sixty nine thousand two twenty seven. So it's pretty close to um, well, it's closer to that thirteen point seven million dollar target that we're looking at. I'd like to recommend that as commissioners, we talk about those items that are all have threes by them, and just sort of talk about them. If we think they're ready to go, there's some on there that I included as a priority, but I have. Um, actually some limitations for me on some of the amount of funding. And I think that, so yeah. Same. Okay. I think that, yeah, it may not be that full 17 million. Yeah. In that. Yeah. But I, there are some that, so should we just start at the top? Yep. For me, um, I support the full funding request for for the Baldwin retirement apartment complex personally. I did on this one as well, just because I think this was one where, when we were looking at a number of housing pieces, this is when we had quite a few units for this amount of money. So I would support the full amount on this one. Also, I really like that it's um, rehabbing existing units instead of us losing that in our inventory locally. Yeah. And I, I too, am. I mean, the total dollars for some of the contracted services were not high, um, you know, and, and I felt like um, this also based on the supportive housing assessment we had and the number of senior homes that we need, this, this seems ready to go to me. I do wanna make sure that we include um, that they need to take, um, and it was in our original packet, we need to have the expectation that they would take um, housing vouchers and that was not and I don't know if that's been confirmed. I see Sarah. She'll, she'll send a letter. Okay. 
because it's USDA funded uh, loans, mm -hmm. they're not allowed to, they, they, it's, there are um, guidelines for the um, eligible tenant, uh, ten, uh, income guidelines, sorry. So I you're have... saying our federal government is working against our federal government? Is that what you're saying? Absolutely true. <laughs> is that right? So It's already there, it, it is already required to be affordable, affordable housing okay. comparable to a voucher. Okay. Um, I can give, they can't, okay, but they, they can't, can't take, take a voucher, voucher. no. Okay. But yeah, they're, the income guidelines, that's the word I was looking for. The income guidelines are, com are comparable, if not equal to. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, I, I really appreciate that question, Mr. Kelly. And I, uh, I was being a little tongue in cheek about um, your comment that the federal government is working against the federal government. But um, yeah, it's extremely similar, if not close to identical to HUD programming and um, income guidelines, but um, separate nonetheless. And all of this is preliminary until we get done with everything. I, I, so the next project would be the Community Children's Center. This is one where I thought there was a really interesting discussion of partial funding, and there was quite a bit of breakdown of, uh, basically, I would not be supportive of the full $6 million, but I'd like to hear from fellow commissioners about which pieces make sense to include. Yeah. I the number is big and ambitious, and that's awesome because we have a lot of work to do in this space. And I, I think there's, I have a lot of support for this work. I do think it might be good to have a study session, on, you know, or a shorter session just to talk about because it's such a large project, um, you know, and just sort of walk through some of the specifics. The application was great. I just want to walk through. And I did read what you sent us, Brooke, and that's included in the packet. And thank you for that. And that has shifted my thinking yet again around it. So I'm not ready to jump in on that one just yet. So let's just keep moving through them. And the, I'm sorry, Commissioner Reed, I didn't mean to cut you off. And then if we maybe when we get to the bottom of this top the the top three, then we can decide if we have time today to talk about those if we want to talk or just have a whole session on it. So the DECA transitional housing. Well, do you want me to? make your lives more difficult at this stage in the process <laughs> or easier well this might make it easier it might not so one of the things i know patrick i'm sorry commissioner kelly <laughs> um i one of the, so what i would say in addition to this as you talk about opportunities for us to continue to use this funding one of the other strategies that i think could come into play here is that the there is additional reserve funds in the behavioral health sales tax fund. The reason why I mention it with the DECA project is that that was a project that was originally stated as um, part of uh, startup funding for that project would have been included in the behavioral health sales tax. All of that work was done pre-COVID and so pre-CARES and ARPA. Um, that being said, there is, even after the construction of the TRC, there's reserves in that fund that could be used for one-time projects that have a tie to behavioral health. So I think while we're trying to get down to 13 million for ARPA funds, there are some projects that we could use those funds for. The hard part here is you haven't seen the budget yet in terms of the status of that fund and where we're at. That is something I could also bring back to you at a meeting next week like just a kind of more full analysis of the fund balance of the mental health sales tax fund and where we think those targets should be. And if we could free up, and I think potentially, you know, a couple million dollars could be freed up to, to bolster these dollars. So with that, I guess like Brooke, we probably could get that for them next week from what you've already put together in the budget. And that's something that we could bring back. So as you're thinking about prioritization, I, I think we would have some funds there that could be used. And obviously then that's a different timeline. We're not restricted on the use of those funds on our timeline. We could do that whenever um, based off of our budget cycle. So I just, the re, I just that's why I mentioned it under DECA. I, I would just suggest, I, thank you. That information is really helpful. I would just suggest that maybe we then add, like we just said that the children community children's center will be a study session item could we add the behavioral health items to a study session item 
in a similar way to say next week once we know that yep. sales tax piece. So that would mean DECA is moving to that category as well. So maybe I'll start on the just food one next, if that's okay. I'm very supportive of the parking lot request. I think it frees up other funds. Um, it was interesting to me that they put the food when you re read the how they would Brooks questions that they put food above the warehousing. I thought that would have been different, but um, you know, I the three hundred twenty five thousand for capital I, I'm comfortable with, which would be well, I think it's actually there's two different numbers there. There's three hundred fifty thousand and there's three twenty five. So maybe yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think that was my my typo there. It is three twenty five, so it's two fifty for the parking lot, and then seventy five for the um, warehouse. Warehouse. Mm -hmm. So I, certainly we need more food support. <laughs> I see that, but but seeing how this is one time funds, I I'm very comfortable with the with the capital expenses. That's where I was at as well. Same. All right. So the Clinton Place expansion, I'm supportive of that full amount. I think it's a really solid project. It's one-time dollars. It's land already owned. It's completely feasible. It'll be permanently affordable. So I think it needs the full amount. <clears throat> Same. Agreed. No, oh, I really like this project. Again, it's housing, which we've sort of talked about as being a big focus for us. One of the reasons I really like this is it's bringing in some other dollars. It's for the land and bringing in some other dollars. Um, there was a separation for me in projects that were asking for everything from ARPA versus those who are saying, I need some from ARPA and then we have other funds. And, and this just addresses a need and I like the way they wrote it. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I, um, I, th I think it's a reasonable amount for significant impact. And I really like the plan for mixed, um, mixed housing types also. I agree. That's the full amount? Yes. Okay, thank you. And then this next one I thought was, uh, this just seems like a need, a one-time cost, a very reasonable write-up and something that would help our community, I would support the full amount for the Senior Resource Center as well. Yeah, easy. I agree. There was a question in our original packet that I just wanted to resolve about debt on this because they've already paid for this. Did we resolve that? Yeah, there, there's no existing debt okay. um, that I'm aware, so it would be an eligible use of the okay. fund. Yeah. I think we misread that initially. Yeah, I had to reread it too, but they paid for the vans out of reserve. Yeah. So tenants to homeowners, I um, maybe I should scroll back to the responses that we got um, in re in <clears throat> about partial funding a little bit. I'm overall supportive of the entire project. I mean, I think for the, the amount of units that it will bring online, the amount of property that will be put into the community land trust is significant. Um, so I'm supportive of the 3.3 million. However, I, I wanted to reread myself and then also hear from other commissioners kind of their interpretation of the response we got about some of those properties that, um, that may not be available anymore. You know, I think this is this is another big one, and I think I'm very supportive of it. I appreciate the work that Tennis to Homeowners does in this space, and this was another one. I liked how they were rehabilitating some while bringing other stock on. And um, but I I I would be fine having a little more conversation about it. And you know, we just got the document last night about their priorities, so I I think it would be helpful to you know, continue to have a conversation about this one, but I, I'm generally supportive of it. I agree. I think this is one that it'd be good to talk through a bit more. 
Would that be a potential for a study session yes. in the future? Yeah. Yeah, or potentially even maybe next week, depending on how far we get today, Brooke. Okay. So the last one on that list is the STA Care Center. Um, I'm supportive of this full amount. I think that it was a pretty um, thoughtful proposal and um, a lot of specific one-time costs that will set them up for um, future success. So I think I appreciated the breakdown of options, but I think it's worth fully funding. Yeah, I, I, I like this one. I, and I, in reading the, their response, they really sort of need the whole thing to do it. And, and I, I'm supportive of it. Agreed. Okay, so we've made it through this first group. Do you want to have more conversation about the Community Children's Center now, or do you want to keep moving down this list? Would it be possible for us to just keep moving down the list and see if there are any like yep. twos that we want to pull up into the three yep. category and then discuss what we want to do with yep. the remaining ones? Yeah, I'm fine with that. There was a couple that maybe I didn't hear because I still had so many questions about. So yeah, let's do it. So the next one would be the well, I can't read it now, but the BIPOC small the EDC Chamber BIPOC Small Business Grant Program. So this was one. I saw this and I saw the Chamber's request, both of which were trying to provide funding for BIPOC entrepreneurs in our community, which I think is an important goal. Um, so I had some questions about, could this be merged with the Chamber's request in some way? What I liked about this one over the Chamber's request is that this was grants rather than a revolving grant, rather than revolving loan fund. And so just from a pure money management perspective, it makes it a lot easier and See Brooke sigh, which I appreciate. Uh, sorry to call you out, Brooke. Um, but I did like if we were going to fund one of the two, I prefer to fund this one over the other one. I see the other the chamber request didn't actually make it onto the list, so I may be arguing against nothing here. Um, but I think it could be a small amount of money that could make a big difference. So I we had a couple of these, as you mentioned, Commissioner Portillo, and, and I've had a couple of conversations with Sarah about how we actually fund this, whether it's an award or whether it's a loan fund. And this one just, this whole space needs more conversation for me. I would also like us to consider possibly including it in another budget conversation. You know, how do we do that long-term? I'm not sure what that looks like yet, but I'm not ready to commit to this one yet just because I, I need more details on how it's going to work. I, I actually wonder if there's a way to get it to, to fund itself over time. I, I haven't figured that out yet, but if it was a if it was a revolving loan fund, but I don't know how we give to a revolving loan fund, I think maybe, I don't know yet. And so just, I have a lot more questions about this one. Commissioners, I was just going to offer on, so looking to the second one, is there the ecosystem mapping and resource, resource mapping? If that project is intended to provide data and more information about whether or not what is, is what's truly missing to increasing the number of BIPOC entrepreneurship uh, entrepreneurs in Douglas County, do we need grants? Do we need revolving loan funds? Do we need the other things? It's intended to go out and document that work and bring stakeholders together and understand what 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 is missing to have a more highly functioning entrepreneurial ecosystem. I know that term gets uh, thrown around a lot, but truly um, to understand what's what's prohibiting um, a good amount of folks from even getting to the loan funds that we have available today that we know are only meet, reaching um, a unique category of folks. Um, our e-community loans is the biggest one that um, the county administers um, through the e-community loan program and the chamber um, administers through the Lawrence Metro program that we collaborate really closely on. Um, the chamber and I work really closely on those two programs. And so if anything, doing that second, um, authorizing that second project would at least give more information to inform whether or not you need a grant program or not. 
and what kind of impact it could have. I am a big fan then of funding that second project and holding off on the first. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, that's kind of where I was at. I did rank both of those as high because I know that our, um, well, to Commissioner Portillo's point, I liked the um, idea and believed more in the feasibility of the grant program proposal, though agree that some more information about the logistics and the sustainability of that is needed. So, um, <clears throat> but I'm really supportive of the, um, the resource mapping project. I think that that's a relatively small amount. It's a worthwhile um, one-time cost and it could give us some answers to these questions and help us come up with a real plan forward. So I, I would support um, dropping the um, business grant program, the 60,000, but um, keeping the 35,000 mapping. I'm fine with that. Jill and Sarah, I'm wondering if you can give us a little bit of a uh, preview or some context about regular budget um, request for HSC. Um, this, this is a program that's really important to me and um, I believe is really necessary for us to build in some sustainable human infrastructure funding for. Um, so I'm not really sure where to land on with this amount and curious what other commissioners thoughts are, but it's a pretty big amount and I'm worried about the sustainability of it if we pour, pour 2 million one-time dollars into it without a plan. Yeah. Um... And I think that's a concern shared by staff. Um, I think Brooke probably could pretty quickly tell you through CARES Act and to date through emergency funding, how much have we given to HSC? So while she's calculating that, I, I, you know, I love it when I make staff do math on the fly. Um, uh, so ever in math leads, Brooke? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you're present, you can be subpoenaed. Um, so uh, <laughs> you, I, I am... I think this is a large ask, uh, but given what we've spent over the last couple of years, it's not unreasonable. However, this community, I think it's important for the community to understand because we've been in work sessions and presentations recently where community members have said, we have funding ongoing for rent and utility assistance. We do not, ladies and gentlemen, this is only what we have for is, for, is funded with one-time federal dollars. When those funds go away, we will return back to approximately $100,000 for this entire community for utility assistance, rent and utility assistance. Um, there is a request inside your proposed 2023 budget that's not currently funded. That would be to add sustained funding for HSC. Um, supported by property tax and, and ongoing county dollars. Um, I think we're going to need to find a way to edge into this. I also, what we've done with HSC in the past has been, you know, with CARES Act, when we had funds from projects that didn't spend all their money, HSC could use those funds rapidly, redeploy them to the community. A strategy you might think about as you move through this is see where you are um, in terms of that dollar amount, um, depending on how much funding you have. I, I think it easily could, I mean, I think this is, this is based off of what their current spend is, but it's really difficult for us to project what this needs gonna be like over the next couple of years. And how do we prepare for a soft landing? I'd ideally, you know, we just added staff to help work on this in January of this year. We've made tremendous progress, but I would have loved to have another six months to kind of have a plan on how we would build into sustainability. I don't have that luxury. Um, I can tell you our ask, the request inside the county budget is $300,000, an additional $300,000. So at a bare minimum, if the commission funded that, you could reduce this by, to me, this was a two-year ask, so 600,000, and you wouldn't really be reducing the ask. Um, however, I still feel like it's, you know, it's difficult. Brooke, do you have that number? 
Yeah, we've distributed 325,000 for this program, um, 125,000 just out of the um, regular ARPA fund, and then 200, um, 200,000 out of the emergency use policy fund. 325, yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> now that's what we've distributed. So I'm sorry. Um, I do believe that there's additional funds that are encumbered that have not yet been distributed. I haven't drawn on those funds. So I'm sorry. It actually might be more. Let me get that. And and I know that HSCs also had a blend of funds um, that are kind of hangovers, if you will, from um, affordable housing advisory funds and CARA. But what I wanted to share, something that Gabby shared with myself and um, a lot of the partners that are in HSC in the room um, uh, yesterday, I think, and um, I asked her to provide some follow-up information so I could put it in your uh, manager's packet, is she's getting some information from the Kansas Housing Resources Corporation that there's probably not going to be funding available for CARA beginning in November. So I only that's new information that I haven't even forwarded on to Sarah because I wanted to have some documentation go along with it. But um, that gave me pause about whether or not it makes sense to have more cushion to set aside, um, especially with discussions of recession nationally and things like that. So. Oh, that gives me heartburn. Um, I, I, we, we need funds in this fund. There's no doubt about that, but how we manage that over time is, is what's in, important to me and so you know i think it will i'd like to hold on this one through our budget conversation and we see where we're at with budget um because you, you've offered some things there sarah we haven't spent although it sounds like brooks recalculating some things it's three hundred and seventy-five thousand. yeah um, mm -hmm. yeah yeah but again she's She's using CARA funds as strategically as she can. The HSC funds are kind of that are the are the the cushion, if you will. Well, and I do hear what you're saying, Jill. That the CARA funds are going to be gone. I, I think the biggest thing that gives me pause in this whole category is that these are still one-time funds. So even if we put this money here, we are providing for our community for one more year, and we're still going to run out of money. So I, I hear what Commissioner Kelly is saying as far as the budget conversation, there is no world in which in our budget conversation, we're going to put 2 million right. towards this. We currently have 120,000 that we revert back to. We, I imagine, will increase that from an ongoing perspective, but we won't increase it to 2 million. And so I, I do think it's important to put something towards this and say, yes, we are going to use X amount of ARPA funds at least to cushion this when CARA funds run out. And it is really scary that these funds will also run out in 2024, and then we won't have that cushion or another cushion. And so that's where these one-time investments in actual long-term affordable housing and supportive housing make a difference, but we don't have enough money to create all of the units that we need. And we know that there's, that would be in the hundreds of millions of dollars, not tens of millions. Um, so. I, I would be okay saying that this should be an ongoing conversation. I wonder if we could maybe just put, it's going to sound like a big placeholder, but if we could maybe put a million in as a placeholder to say, we know that we're going to allocate a significant chunk in this category. We don't know what that's going to fully be until after budget. Is that, could there be some sort of placeholder amount? I, I'm comfortable with that and think that, um, <clears throat> million dollars for two two more years of emergency use essentially um is valid I, in terms of placeholder i guess just process wise if we called that a placeholder it just means we would not be issuing an award yet or de defining the award amount until we have had further conversation and gotten through regular budget yeah, and maybe I could offer a possible, 
alternative to that. What if we put a million in now? And, you know, I fully anticipate we're going to have conversations today and next week about this. And you could feel more comfortable, I think, by next week, if that million dollar placeholder is where you want it to be. I, I, I share Commissioner Portillo's desire. I don't want to completely leave this open-ended, particularly if we're getting rid of the emergency funding, because that is it's that is the what's using it right now. So, but I think a million definitely reduces some of what you need to look at. And I think you, you know, and then you can just see where the rest of the projects come in. Um, and how you feel comfortable about that. Yeah. Yeah, my big concern is how, how we make this sustainable yeah. within our budget. And yeah. so that we're not worried about when this fund goes away and when that fund goes away and you know, what happens when CARES, when ARPA goes away? That That's my con continual concern about this. And so part of wanting to talk about it through our budget process is making sure we have dollars there and there's a request there. Um, I also, you know, I have a little bit of a concern around not knowing, you know, how much we're getting from Kira versus, you know, our HSC. And so if that, we, we can get that number from Kara. Yeah, maybe that would be helpful because I'm just trying to figure out what the overall amount of need here is. And I, I'm con I just have concerns with our current economy. It's going to get higher yeah. rather than lower. Well, Commissioner Kelly, I think that last point is the most mm -hmm. important one, that yeah. even if we have good data on what we've done up until this point, when we're seeing all of these other federal programs run out, and we're heading into an economy where the need may be more, not less. It is scary that these are temporary funds, but I think there are temporary funds that we will need some chunk of as we continue to work on long-term solutions. So are you comfortable with putting a million in for now and then getting you more information and then revisiting this both next week and decide how you want to handle that with budget? Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay. Commissioner, I was just going to share. I have a spreadsheet and I can share it with you all. I can forward it on. Although Sarah, I don't know if Sarah we shared I, I this previously. I had a weekly memo a couple of weeks ago related to how much care funding has been received in Douglas County. To uh, eleven point three million. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, ten million. Ten point nine million in City of Lawrence. The balance is in the other cities. And. That's both for rent and utility assistance. Is right. that correct? And mortgage assistance, I think. Mortgage it's assistance. mortgage assistance. Net the homeowner's separate. Assistance yeah. Separate yeah. No, it's okay. Separate. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then compared to the state, the, the state payout is 157 million. So a million may not make much of a dent. All right. The next one is the historical society. So I'm supportive of these. I'm, they're real one-time projects. Um, and I think, and it's not that big of a difference, but would support it without the personnel or fringe costs necessarily, though that doesn't make much of a dent. Um, but I feel, I mean, they're truly one-time projects. Um, they've been sought after through our HCC grant program before some of them not all of these projects necessarily but pieces of them have been and so I think um, when I read them my thought is that um, to resolve some of these issues all at once seems like there's some economies and scale there and then also might help alleviate the pressure on that uh, annual HCC grant fund um, for some additional projects um, from different different groups and organizations. So that's my thought with this proposal. I could get behind that particularly because of what you mentioned, Commissioner Reed, about that alleviating some pressure on that annual HCC fund. So I would be supportive of funding this in that full amount. Yeah, I'm supportive of funding it um, in light of our discussion that we just had in $11 million of CURA funding. But we did tell 
this group to come back to us. <laughs> you know, they have come to us with budget requests. And um, I, I think we understood what their challenges were and, and we've been supportive of these historical organizations in the past. Yeah, and I really appreciate that they, it was a collaborative and collective um, proposal that um, <clears throat> made a big impact on me, like that they clearly have been in communication and identified top needs that would go a long way for the kind of overall landscape of these organizations. Brooke, did we get, um, this wasn't one, was this one we got a response on? No, I, I did, okay. I only emailed the high priority ones. But we could ask them between now and next week if Absolutely. you want to. Yeah, I'm just, I don't want to waste their time. And I feel like they've looked at, you know, I mean, when you look at the type of projects, I don't want to nickel and dime them down. I, that, yeah. And I, I agree with what both of my fellow commissioners are saying, that it does seem like they coordinated and collaborated, which was something that we asked for as well. Are we talking about the full amount, including the personnel, or are you talking about just the capital? I, would I can't say just remember. the capital. Yeah. I know it's not that big of a difference, but we're doing the same thing to other projects. Yep. So I would say just the one time expenses. Agreed. Yeah, I'd say that I'm just totaling things up here. <laughs> it's not working. Right now. And the last one in this one would be the Ballard Center. Uh, I support this one because I do think. It's a relatively small request and um, think that they have gone a long way towards getting some other um, pieces of that project secured and, and ready to roll, it sounds like. Um, so I think it's a, an investment that makes sense. I could get on board with this one I, for the same reasons. I think I may have been the holdout because I had some questions, but I think a lot of those were alleviated with additional follow-ups. So. I would be fine with this. I was supportive of this one. I think it's a relatively small, and this this group has done a ton, um, you, you know, and some of the groups we're talking about who need that assistance. This is one of those groups that really works closely with them. So, so if we do that, and it is five o'clock, commissioners, um, our total, this is, this, this is just the total Brooke of, those are for the twos. Let me go back to the one. Clear my filter here. And then um, we are at 8.5 million. While still needing to have those conversations about DECA and, and the children's, the community which children's were both center. Larger asks. Yep. Do you want to try to have? The children's community children's center conversation now or next week depending on i don't want to go too much further away from ones and twos without having some con follow-up conversations it's 505 i would vote to have that next week so that we don't feel rushed before our follow-up meeting or we have time on our regular agenda are it's you free be... at 5 30. okay <laughs> Are there others you want to ask to stick around? We have a small presentation at 5.30. Well, small. It's Lawrence Douglas County Fire Medical. It may take a while, but it should, I mean, I, I think it'd be like 30, 40 minutes. Um, and then we could have additional, but I want to make sure we know who we want to hear from so the folks can have their afternoon or evening back. And we do have next week. Because the only one I really think you want to follow up on was the CCC. Am I remembering that correctly? And then, and then maybe the EDC, the BIPOC grant, am I? Uh, the ones we invited today were um, Success by Six, Artists Helping the Homeless, Burt Nash, and then um, Kim with the Children's Community Center. And I believe all those folks are here today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to be respectful of, we asked some folks to come today um, 
these hour long work sessions sometimes go real fast conversation <laughs> and there's a lot of it to be had. Um, I think that, well, it looks like the success by six um, one didn't land in the, the one and two commissioners. So I guess with that in mind, I think that, that the ECC C, because it's three C's, right, Kim? There's no way. Um, <clears throat> is definitely a conversation that everybody has indicated wanting to dig into more. Um, about the artist helping the homeless, that was the other one on my mind um, with curiosity about behavioral health sales tax. So I just, if we can kind of put a pin in that and know that it might be a conversation along with the DECA request and, and any others that you might identify. So would Bert Nash fall under yeah. that as well? I, I sort of want to talk about Bert Nash again, especially with the change in dollar amount and the more details we got. You guys free next week? Four? Um, yeah, so we could have, so we could see uh, having artists helping the homeless, Bert Nash. We could extend the invite to DECA. We didn't ask them, need them, but we'll just let them know that we continue to have that conversation about using behavioral health sales tax funds, and we can have that in the conversation on the 29th. And I'm, honestly, that agenda looks real light. So we can decide if you want to do that at four or 530. It just, dep I know I need to have a 530 probably, but uh, so think about that. I'd prefer 530 over adding a work session if we don't have pressing agenda items, given that we're going to go into budget the next week. Oh, so we would do that conversation at the 530 business session next week. Yeah, I support okay. that. And so then we'll ask the CCC to stay and have conversations today at the 5.30. Do you want to have additional conversations with the Compass Project? And then who else did we ask to come back? A Compass Project, they might be online, but I don't. They're here. She's oh, they here. Are. Devin's here. Okay. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, I mean, that's, is that the last person that we asked to come? Yeah. As far as I knew, it was just those four. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying that. I think I would like to hear a bit more from um, both Compass Project and ECCC about, we got some great responses in writing, but Devin, if you're available to stick around, stick around for our 530 agenda, okay. um, that those two things, I feel like that they seem inter interrelated um, and some conversations I'd like to have both of them here for. And, and honestly, commissioners, you could decide to rearrange the agenda and have this conversation before the LDCFM presentation. Since we asked folks to stay, I'm sure. Hmm. Interim Chief Fagan would not mind waiting um, for that conversation. So we can make that adjustment and try to move them up on the agenda to do that a little quicker, closer it is. I would be in favor of that. So would that work? Yeah. Okay, I apologize. We idea. should have probably Thank scheduled you. it first. We just. We're kind of doing this impromptu on some things. <laughs> we did give you double budget duty this spring and yeah. summer. So, um, well, with that, I think we have a plan for. We've made a lot of progress today on projects that there's clear support for. We're going to have some conversations here in, in a half hour or so, and we have a a, a task for next week's five thirty meeting, which is to talk more about behavioral health, and then. Um, Anything else we need to make sure we get on the you want us to work on for next week? I think I just want to follow up with tenants to, to homeowners. The other one that we indicated we were going to. You want to see if she could come next week? Yeah, I'm trying to like efficiency wise. When does it make questions. most sense? Yeah, let's see if she, I don't. Absolutely. We didn't call her today. <laughs> so let's see if we can get tenants to homeowners to come to the next week. I do see that someone's online, but I would feel better that if we try to just invite them to next week's 530 session, unless, does that work? Yeah, and they're all, I mean, housing, we're yeah. supportive housing projects. So it makes sense to me that we yeah. have that collective discussion. Yeah. Okay. Anything else for the good of the study session? All right, we are adjourned until 530.